Hi everyone. So we're on chapter seven of Because of Winn Dixie, and we met a new character, Miss Franny Block, the librarian at the library at the Herman W. Block Library. And she was about to tell the story of when she first met a bear. So here we go, chapter seven. Back when Florida was wild, when it was consisted of nothing but palmetto trees and mosquitoes so big they could fly away with you, Miss Franny Block started in, and I was just a little girl no bigger than you. My father, Herman W. Block, told me that I could have anything I wanted for my birthday, anything at all. Miss Franny looked around the library. She leaned in close to me. I don't want to appear prideful, she said, but my daddy was a very rich man, a very rich man. She nodded and then leaned back and said, and I was a little girl who loved to read. So I told him, I said, daddy, I would most certainly love to have a library for my birthday. A small little library would be wonderful. You asked for a whole library? A small one, Miss Franny nodded. I wanted a little house full of nothing but books, and I wanted to share them, too. And I got my wish. My father built me this house, the very one we're sitting in now. And at a very young age, I became a librarian. Yes, ma'am. What about the bear? I asked. Did I mention that Florida was wild in those days? Miss Franny Block said. Uh-huh, you did. It was wild. There were wild men and wild women and wild animals. Like bears? Yes, ma'am, that's right. Now, I have to tell you, I was a little Miss Know-It-All. I was a Miss Smarty Pants with my library full of books. Oh, yes, ma'am. I thought I knew the answers to everything. Well, one hot Thursday, I was sitting in my libra library with all the doors and windows open and my nose stuck in a book when a shadow crossed the desk. And without looking up, yes, ma'am, without even looking up, I said, Is there a book I can help you find? Well, there was no answer. And I thought it might have been a wild man or a wild woman, scared of all these books and afraid to speak up. But then I became aware of a very peculiar smell, a very strong smell. I raised my eyes slowly, and standing right in front of me was a bear. Yes, ma'am, a very large bear. How big, I asked. Oh, well, said Miss Franny, perhaps three times the size of your dog. Then what happened, I asked her. Well, said Miss Franny, I looked at him and he looked at me. He put his big nose up in the air and sniffed and sniffed, as if he was trying to decide if the little Miss Know-it-all librarian was what he was in the mood to eat. And I sat there. And then I thought, well, this bear intends to eat me. I'm not going to let it happen without a fight. No, ma'am. So very slowly, very carefully, I raised up the book I was reading. What book was that? I asked. Why, it was War and Peace, a very large book. I raised it up slowly, and then I aimed it carefully, and I threw it right at that bear and screamed, Be gone! Do you know what? No, ma'am, I said. He went. But this is what I will never forget. He took the book with him. Nuh-uh, I said. Yes, ma'am, said Miss Franny. He snatched it up and ran. Did he come back? I asked. No, I never saw him again. Well, the men in town used to tease me about it. They used to say, Miss Franny, we saw the bear yours out in the woods today. He was reading that book and he said it was sure good and would be all right if he kept it for just another week. Yes, ma'am, they did tease me about it, she sighed. I imagine I'm the only one left from those days. I imagine I'm the only one that even recalls that bear. All my friends... Everyone I knew when I was young, they're all dead and gone. She sighed again. She looked sad and old and wrinkled. It was the same way I felt sometimes being friendless in a new town and not giving um, and not having a mama to comfort me. I sighed too. When Dixie raised his head off of his paws and looked back and forth between me and Miss Franny, he sat up and then showed Miss Franny his teeth. Well, now look at that, she said. That dog is smiling at me. It's a talent of his, I told her. It's a fine talent, Miss Franny said, a very fine talent. And she smiled back at Wayne Dixie. We could be friends, I said to Miss Franny. I mean, you and me and Wayne Dixie, we could all be friends. Miss Franny smiled even bigger. Why, that would be grand, she said. 
just grand. And right at that minute, right when the three of us had decided to be friends, who should come marching into the Herman W. Block Memorial Library but old pinch-faced Amanda Wilkinson? She walked right up to Miss Franny's desk and said, I finished Johnny Tremaine and I enjoyed it very much. I would like something even more difficult to read now because I'm an advanced reader. Yes, dear, I know, said Miss Franny. She got up and out of her chair. Amanda pretended like I wasn't there. She stared right past me. Are dogs allowed in the library? She asked Miss Franny as they walked away. Certain ones, said Miss Franny, a select few. And then she turned around and winked at me. I smiled back. I just made my first friend in Naomi and nobody was going to mess that up for me. Not even old pinch face Amanda Wilkinson. What a fun chapter that is. Uh, next week, we'll start with chapter eight. Maybe we'll learn more about Amanda and her backstory. All right, guys.